45-year-old Albert Wolfog lived in Columbus, Ohio in 2003. He had a wife and four children. On the morning of July 18, Albert's mom and one of his employees found his lifeless body inside of his house. He was strangled and stabbed more than 20 times. Because he was stabbed so many times, it was believed that the attacker knew him. A large television was stolen from the house, just leaving a cable box that was found toppled over. Investigators were able to collect fingerprints from the crime scene on a cable box that did not match Albert or anyone that was in the house, showing that it most likely belonged to the attacker. A timeline was then created by investigators. They found that Albert went to a local bar on the evening of July 16 and was last seen leaving the parking lot with his Jaguar convertible. His life was taken shortly after he made it back home. Despite years of investigating, a suspect could not be identified. It was only recently that the fingerprints collected at a crime scene could be used to identify someone. Investigators identified 47-year-old Alvin Barfield as the man whose fingerprints were found at a crime scene. Detectives from the Columbus Police Department found that Alvin lives in South Carolina. On January 21st, 2021, the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Unit arrested Alvin Barfield at his home. New details have also now been revealed. When Albert was last seen in a parking lot, he was with two black men and one white man. It was also revealed that a second set of fingerprints were found inside the house, and also the television was too heavy for one person to carry. It is believed that Alvin is the white man Albert was last seen with. Investigators now hope to find the other two men or identify the second set of fingerprints. Alvin is currently in a Muskogee County Jail. During an interview, he denied any involvement and said that he did not know Albert and was never inside of his house. Albert's wife was quoted as saying, It has been very, very hard over the years. It has been 17 years now, and it is something you go through every day. You never forget it, but you try to continue on. 47-year-old Bonnie Baker lived in Denver, Colorado in 1998. She stayed with her boyfriend, Crispin Nene Perez. Bonnie worked at a Ford restaurant in Morrison, Colorado. In June of 1998, Bonnie and Crispin attended a party with friends where they celebrated that Bonnie received a pay raise. During the evening, Crispin got angry when Bonnie was dancing with other people. The couple left the party together. Bonnie's last words to one of her friends was, It would be better if I just go now, or it would be worse. That same evening, someone called 911 to say that a woman's life was taken in her apartment on West Louisiana Avenue. The caller said that a culprit was Crespin Nene Perez, and he was driving to Mexico with the woman's body in the trunk, and would dump the body somewhere along the way. Investigators made their way over to the apartment that Bonnie and Crispin shared. They found broken glasses and plates covering the floor and the kitchen table was overturned. The 911 caller was a neighbor and told investigators at a scene that Crispin told her, Something bad happened to us. You will never have to see Bonnie again because I'm going to make her disappear. It seemed clear to investigators what had happened. Bonnie and Crispin were arguing and he decided to take her life inside of their apartment. He then put her body in the trunk of his car and left for Mexico, as the neighbor said. Investigators tried to find Crispin or Bonnie, but to no avail. The neighbor gave a description of Crispin's vehicle. Two days later, a car matching the description and a license plate crashed near Globe, Arizona. The driver ran away. A witness identified Crispin as the driver from a photo lineup. The car was impounded and blood evidence was collected from the trunk. In July of 1999, just over a year after Bonnie was last seen, two boys were riding horses on Navajo land outside Manuelita, New Mexico. They discovered a human skull. Navajo Nation tribal police found more skeletal remains in the area. An autopsy failed to identify the person, but it was noted that the remains belonged to a female. The remains were then sent to the New Mexico Office of Medical Investigators, where it could be stored until DNA was advanced enough. In October of 2012, 
DNA police detective Kenneth Klaus was assigned to Bonnie's case and have been called since 1998. He called an FBI agent in New Mexico to discuss Bonnie's disappearance. The agent knew about her female remains found in 1999 and believed it could potentially be Bonnie. DNA samples of the skeleton were sent to Denver and it matched known samples had come from Bonnie. In 2013, investigators found that based on evidence they had, there were sufficient grounds to arrest Crispin. The problem was that he was living in Mexico at a time and would be difficult to get him back to Colorado. It took seven years to get him back to the US. In May of 2020, Crespin and a lot of other fugitives were handed over to America by the Mexican government. Preliminary hearings have been held this year. Crespin's family have testified that he has violent tendencies. I was not able to find any information on when the trial takes place, but one has to believe that investigators have enough evidence to get a conviction. A man broke into an apartment in San Mateo, California at around 4 a.m. on February 4, 1989. He then took a knife and climbed into the victim's bed. His face was covered with a bandana. He indecently assaulted her and then stabbed her. The victim somehow managed to convince the attacker to leave and she then called 911. The woman thankfully survived but was not able to give a description of the unknown man. DNA of the suspect was collected from her body and stored so it could be used later. In December of 2020, investigators used genetic genealogy to identify the suspect. He was identified as 55-year-old John Harris Jr. He was arrested in February 2021. He is currently booked in the San Mateo County Main Jail. His bond is set at $500,000. I hope that investigators try and see if he is responsible for any other crimes.